Hello everyone and welcome back to BPL season three. This is round of 16 group B and we are excited to have you with us. So uh, for those of you who haven't been following the group at all or who are just turning in, this is Teddy versus Modulo, two incredibly, incredibly strong players. Uh, and this is going to be the winner's final, which is in round two. I've got Zateo with me. Zateo, how do you feel about this matchup? Are you favoring Teddy? Are you favoring Medulo? What do you think? Man, at this point, I don't, I don't know because I did not expect Modulo to to uh, take out X Factor there. Yeah, fair so enough. Anything can happen. I mean, Modulo's been practicing. Uh, Teddy, I just don't know what kind of shape he's in. I'm sure you know Teddy's a, a really strong player. Um, so I, we'll just have to see what happens. Yeah, um, someone made the incredibly smart decision to put Teddy as not leaving the group. Uh, I'm not going to name name names. <laughs> um, Teddy is not washed as he uh, two owed Contra, as you can see here. So yeah. <laughs> round one is done. Um, and yeah, we are in the winner's final here, which is going to be Teddy. Sorry, Teddy versus Modulo. Modulo, I think, is the lower OS player and Teddy is the higher. So... Modulo is going to ban second and pick second, and Teddy is going to ban pick first. So let's see what the players decide to choose. We've seen a lot of bans. Um, yeah, I think Shallow Straight is probably one of the most yeah. common bans. What are the other what what other bands do you think are we we've seen a lot of? I'm trying to think and I can't now. That we've seen a lot of. Uh, we've seen a lot of Sir uh Sir Lotta. we've seen a lot of is it is crack uh oh yeah that's certainly true certainly seen um uh feast of hades that newer one yeah that's true i why do you think people ban hades i feel like well maybe they just haven't played it as much or yeah i mean i don't not i don't know i mean it's it's i don't know it's just another map to me but i mean maybe there's some specific reason for them to, to ban such a map yeah, that makes sense. And oh, that's the other. That's no, none of the players want to play that map. All of us specs, we want everyone to play that map, but they okay, are, yeah. they are not, they're just not cooperating with us. It's a little annoying, guys. You guys need to pick shallow straights. <laughs> yeah, I, I want to see some straights. That's what I'm saying. That's what I'm saying. And Teddy going Feast of Hades. So even though it's a new map and he's an old player, it turns out an old dog can uh, learn new tricks. Yeah, <laughs> definitely. I mean, I, th I think it's a good map. I, I do, too. I think it's it's a great map because, I mean, Hades Ponds is probably one of my favorite 8v8 maps. And I feel like this is a smaller 1v1 slash team game map that sort of achieves the same. It, it plays similar. And I just I really like that. Mm -hmm. Yeah, uh, totally. But players are loading in and let's see what's going on here. We've got Teddy as core in the bottom right. And we've got Modulo as arm in the top left. And these are slightly offset starting positions. Uh, which, why do you think Teddy chose the uh, more forward spawn, Zateo? Um, I would think you'd want to be a little bit more aggressive or aggressive with defending the back expansions, I suppose. And the forward spawn kind of gives gives that to him. Uh, Modulo in a slightly more defensive position here. Right, and Teddy's going to open bots. There is quite a bit of reclaim on this map, so we're going to see core bots, but there is, what is that, 68,000 energy reclaim, which can yeah. definitely help. And Modulo, arm bots, he's got four ticks and a con queued up. And only ten. one tick out first, okay. Oh, really? Interesting. So, I, I suppose it's just like a scouting tick to see where he is, but going to be playing a little bit more defensively here. Yeah, that makes sense. And Teddy, I assume, mm -hmm. is going to do his standard one grunt into two con into more grunts after. Yeah, no, only one con this time. Oh, interesting. It gets a little bit of harassment on it, but I mean, you know, those grunts are definitely going to push it away. 
bit modular with an incredibly early radar on the high ground here, which I like. I mean, normally you see the in-base radar, but I guess it makes sense because mm -hmm. if you don't have the high ground, the high ground radar there sees everything. And if you have a low ground radar, you can't see the raids coming in if they kind of circle up and around through the back. So I actually like that. That's that's awesome. Yeah, generally people will delay the radar until the, they find a high ground to put it on or they'll like, you know, make note of where to put it ahead of time. So Modulo sees Teddy's base and he's got one tick that's kind of harassing and looking at this expanding con and then he sees Teddy's grunt that's coming in here. Can Teddy actually... So Teddy cleans up the tick in his base. What does he see here? This grunt, he sees nothing. This grunt <laughs> is just... Nothing. <laughs> he's just chilling. Grunt's chilling. Oh, two ticks oh. run by. Yeah, oh, and it's, it's pretty rare for two to take down a grunt. Yeah, so grunt cleans up both and is just going to kind of keep running and scouting along. I think he doesn't want to throw them away, right? Because he just wants the information. And mm -hmm. Teddy with a little bit of a mixed economy here. He's got the triple solar and then the rest is in wind and he is dropping out another con to keep expanding. And Modulo is leaning heavily into, into that arm wind. He says, I want nothing to do with the sun. There's no solars here. Yeah, well, it's definitely, it's, it's a trade-off, right? I mean, that gives you some more metal early on to, to work with, but if the wind does dip down, you might be in some trouble here. Yeah, and Teddy has three grunts chasing this lonely pawn, but as long as the angle doesn't get cut, the pawn is faster now, so it can just run mm -hmm. away, and he's completely fine here. He might have some, yeah, he's got some reinforcing pawns and some reinforcing ticks, so if Teddy isn't careful, he might lose all three of these grunts and how's the split does he get oh oh that's a good angle oh, it, it, was, off, it was and then he yeah i was like oh he's got it and then he backed off but teddy's just gonna do great her oh i was gonna say he's gonna do great good harassment fix. here man I feel like Modulo baited him in a little bit there, right? He was like, yeah, oh, yeah. yeah, like, I'm, I'm AFK. I'm not paying attention here. And then Teddy's like, okay, let me snipe this Max. And he's like, gotcha. Yeah, I, I feel like that's exactly what happened. A Man, bit of a bait and switch. Teddy does not have a radar here to see these ticks that snuck in through the bottom. So Modulo... Yeah, he's only got that radar in his base. I don't know. I, f I feel like you need a, a radar out there. A little bit sooner but yeah i mean he might just be relying more on on that killer instinct just know exactly where those ticks are yeah we've seen some pretty ridiculous instinct plays from like contra and teddy where they'll get out trashers just as the air lab swap happens mm -hmm. yeah oh one two ticks get in here on the side teddy's gonna detonate and detonation kills both the ticks and this group of ticks is running down here does teddy Teddy still doesn't see these. Oh, and he's got... Now he's reacting. Yeah. So Contra's got three pawns, and he has this reinforcing tick army that's coming in. And it looks like they're going to get one max. They're cleaning up some of the grunts. Oh, the tri the ticks are the real story here. Yeah, can they get the con? Oh, it's so cool. Oh. oh, man. 30 HP, man, that was so close. I, f I feel like that might still be worth... Well, he did leave a lot of metal on the side, but he killed the two maxes and mm -hmm. slows him down a bit. Yeah, if you got the con, that would have been huge. Not so lucky. And Teddy again with this early A Solar build, right? Where and if mm -hmm. you look, he's got it queued up, right? He's got the the A Solar Nano, A Solar Nano. That's kind of the classic Teddy scaling, and it's not a horrible wind map, but he is core. How do you feel like the breakdown is between this? Do you think this is one of those things? Because Modulo is just pure wind right now, right? So, do you think it's really just the arm core difference, or is it also just a playstyle difference? I mean, I think it's a, mostly a playstyle difference. Um, but yeah, I mean, I think if you're choosing arm, you're like thinking about that specifically, like, oh, maybe I want to favor some more wins here. And Teddy, again, opting to walk his calm a little bit early. So we've mm -hmm. seen him keep his calm in base for some of these grunt opens and not have as many nanos. But and here, it looks like he's going to have the double nano and then he's going to start calm walking to mid 
How valuable yeah, I mean, do you I, think I, the, I, the three mexes are and kind of the early Kamwak is? I mean, I, I think it just really depends on how much metal you have work, you know, that you're working with. If if you're out of metal, there's no need to keep your con com there, especially if you have some turrets already up. Uh, so you can just like produce using that, and then the commander can move forward and just have a nice like strong position out in the field. Uh, meanwhile, Mo Modulo decided to switch into vehicles here. Interesting. Do you what feel do you like core is stronger just because you can Salah on this map? Um. Yeah. I mean, I think core is a strong choice because of that. But it, you know, it's not the end all be all. I mean, by the time you get to the that points. Uh, you know, a lot can happen, so. Um, Man, this low wind just crippled yeah. Modulo there. That is brutal. If you look at the wind difference, the E difference right there, it's like Teddy's 60% ahead just because he's on this this A solar train. And mm -hmm. he did his V swap, so both players with like the seven minute vehicle lab swap. Let's see if yeah. one is a well, little This is going to hurt Modulo a lot just having that lower wind. Yeah, I mean, he's floating an absolute insane amount of metal, right? 1,500 yeah. metal. Um, and his economy was totally fine before that wind dropped. But once the wind right. dropped, drops, it just makes it so much more difficult. But yeah, vehicles are a great choice if you're trying to spend metal as well. Just, and yeah. Modula with the similar kind of camera to Teddy where they're a little bit farther out, but... He's mm -hmm. focusing on scaling his energy economy quite a bit, and let's look at Teddy's view here. Yeah, Teddy also plays quite far out. I think a lot of the higher players do. Yeah. Wow, he's got that con. He's got that con taking all of the mexes <laughs> all the way up. So, yeah, might as well. Just area mex it, right? Yeah, Modulo, I feel like he's starting to get out macroed a little bit, and I think that's something that Teddy's really known for. Do you think this is cause for concern hmm. for Modulo, or will he be able to break? Yeah, out I definitely, once... I definitely would be concerned uh, if it were me, especially if you once you see all those units on the bottom there, because you don't know what else is on the map. So if he is that big of a force, like going along the edge of the map, not protecting himself, then you know that's kind of scary to to think that that's only a raiding force. Yeah, I mean, now of course, since we can see everything, we know that that's not necessarily true. He has like everything down there, but. Um, or most of everything, I should say. But yeah, it's a, it's a big force. These pawns are actually going to crash into this grunt incisor ball, but I think the incisor ball had a little bit of a better flank. I, no, Modulo just has too many units, so he's going to clean yeah. all of this up. So that is quite a bit of metal left on Modulo's side of the map, which mm -hmm. is quite nice. Yeah, there's a lot. He definitely needs that right now. But... Teddy has this southern raid that we talked about before that is going to mm -hmm. start heading up. Yeah, and, it, and I think this is very important. I mean, I, I think a lot of people will switch into vehicles and start doing um, like medium tanks too early on this map. But having, uh, you know, having a lot of grunts and a lot of, or I should say, and or a lot of incisors means you can have, um, you know, a lot more units on the on the map looking at all these different angles that you could potentially be attacked you can attack during, down those fronts and just protect yourself at the same time uh, so i think that's really strong and we see, we see teddy doing that right now yeah teddy's there were quite a few grunts here i don't think they really got too much done though modulo is just ready he's got yeah. the triple llts he had the radar that saw it coming and this is another pretty big metal yeah donation. i'm surprised that he committed in there you know, like once you see a, enough units to defend, like why not just pull them back, right? I mean, maybe just, you know, APM stall or whatever. Teddy with the air lab, Shuri's are coming out now and that's gonna make, it's got, it's got seven Shuri's. Man, that mm. makes raiding real hard. Yeah. Yeah, I mean, if he if he waited to uh, pull the trigger on, on the actual raiding part of that army, if he brought the Shuri's with it, he could have done like devastating damage. Majo's going to try to do a little bit of a counter raid here, right? He's got six blitz, six pawns, and they're running along the bottom of the map. He does have these res bots up top, but he did a massive area res, and the path mm. is going to be a little weird. I don't know if they're going to actually come up and res this big field yet or not, but I guess we'll see. Yeah, I mean, I think they should just because there isn't any anything to res in the back. 
Blitz are going to pick off this expanding con, which is nice, and he gets some mexes. Unfortunately, Le Balanced Shuri is here, so I think this whole raiding force is just instantly yep, disabled. Yeah. Oh, and Modular Heat. Yeah. No, no Rex. Instant self D, but unfortunately yeah. too slow. Yeah, unfortunately, the, the Shuri's or the, the stun uh, slows down or stops the detonation. Contra, or contra, uh, Modulo <laughs> with the, the stout switch. He's got quite a few stouts. I think he needs to be really careful, though. This is so much metal that's easily shuriable, right? He needs trashers yeah. or he needs fighters of his own. To be aggressive on this side of the map without AA when you've seen shuries, I think is really scary. Oh, no. Oh, yeah. This is this is really rough. It's, yeah, this is really, really metal. rough. Oh, and meanwhile, like, he doesn't have anything on the left-hand side. Right, no, because that's a lot of medium tanks on one side. Teddy is just instantly collapsing down here. I mean, all of these incisors are just coming in. He gets actually he doesn't get quite as many stouts as I thought. It looks like the Shuri's were maybe there a little bit too early and they got picked off. And so mm -hmm. the incisors pushed him back. Yeah. Oh, and... Well, meanwhile, Teddy's going with that amphibious lab. Yeah, here come the Salas and that's. Yeah. It's gonna That's be a little rough. A little scary. It's also really I mean, scary just because you have so many great raiding routes kind of through that middle pond yeah. that you can really exploit, and armed turtles just don't have the same impact. Mm -hmm. Yeah, and I think you know. Um... That's going to be their their main use here, I think, because there's so many medium tanks on that side. Um, I don't think they do quite as well against the medium tanks. I mean, they do well, but not like you know, fantastic like they do against like the grunts. And Modulo postured in, he did a little bit of damage on the side, uh, but Teddy full committed in with these grunts again, and I think they get cleaned up. They don't really get too much. On the bright side, he is sort of denying all of the expansions that mm. are on this left side, which is nice. Oh, and Modulo's yeah. army is out of position. It went all yeah, the way Yeah, it looks to like the they're right. doing a base trade in a way. I, I mean, I think Modulo looked at the situation and said, like, I can't really deal with these amphibious units right now, so let me just, like use my fast units to, to hit you where it hurts. Um, but yeah, that does leave him open to, to that counter attack. He does have uh, crossbows. Modulo does have crossbows with this rating force, so it can't mm -hmm. be shuried. But I think he needs to be really careful here. Oh, actually, Teddy's going to throw his Salas directly into the main, and I think they just get cleaned up here. He does have all these incisors running up. Oh, oh yeah. Modulo has a Dragon's Claw ready, so it's going to do quite a bit of damage. Uh, That's a lot of incisors, though. That is a lot of incisors. That is 16 incisors with grunt support, and this is an exposed flank now with a lot of mexes and all that wind that he can probably clean up in the same mm -hmm. side oh pounder brute grunt is fighting back his army so i don't think he's gonna be able to get very much more done here he needs to back off and teddy is raiding oh boy yeah i think catching him out of position like that is, is or was or yeah is still a very big deal like all those tanks like even if they get picked off it's going to be a lot of economical damage here and yeah i mean teddy's running through he's sniping as much energy production as possible he got all of the winds up high and wow this all the converters popped now he's got an additional round of salamanders coming in from the right side and mm -hmm. modulo has to feel like this is oh, going yeah, to be this lights is... out soon <laughs> This is pretty over. I mean, there's not much comeback potential for Modulo in this position. I mean, if you look at the, the metal and and energy and stuff being produced, like it's, it just severely outscales Modulo at this point with all those lost mexes and energy. This is going to be a bit of a... There's going to be quite a bit of Rex here, but yeah, yeah. I mean, it, at 100... Well, just and, like the time to rebuild it all. Like, yeah, and without the energy, I think he's just... He's gonna be yeah, too far. Rebuilding all that wind is is definitely kind of kind of rough. Oh, and I didn't even see Teddy make these bombers, but the bombers are gonna come in. Oh and yeah. That is more or less on the lights cake. out. <laughs> yeah. Let's see if Modulo, when Modulo wants to call it or what he wants to do. He might just be thinking about what he wants to do in game two, right? Mm-hmm. Right. I mean, there is time between each one, but. 
he's still sort of fooling around and playing it. Well, just like, I mean, I think it's, you know, it's fresh in his mind of like what just happened and like trying to figure out what could he have done differently. Do you think it's ever worth it to try to go seaplanes on this map? Or you just never have the uh, E? I mean, it's a possibility, but yeah, usually E is going to be an issue with that. And Modulo calls it, he GG's out, and his commander yep. explodes. It's a tough world out there when your commander explodes. Yeah. So, yeah, I mean, Teddy, he has just been incredible with all of his macro play. I mean, basically from three or so minutes on, he was just ahead and past 12 mm -hmm. minutes, that gap became even more substantial. Yeah, so, that game looked pretty scary. I would not want to be in Modulo's shoes. Yeah, that's that is definitely a little rough. I mean, I feel like he had a few chances to kind of pull it back. And I think he had a few good raids, but especially that, you know, his raid along the right side of the map where he ran over and then ran down, it just did not play out like I think he wanted it to. Teddy had radar. He saw the movement and he just immediately yeah. threw his army right into the main. Yeah, it was a perfect hold. Didn't like lose, lose much of anything there. Yeah, but that is it for game one. So Teddy leads the series game one and we will be right back and we will see you in game two.